Hey guys, welcome in our next video. Today I'm also with Martin. Hi guys. And today we're gonna explore exact case, uh, the case of uh, empty places on a shelf, a case where we use ML, uh, and we would like to be as precise as possible without using in it depends. So let's begin with that. So the case is that I would like to have uh, computer vision machine learning, which finding the empty places uh, on on my shelves in a shop, uh, or uh, pointing uh, the the incorrect display of of my products on 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 the shelves. So how will how would we need to, how we need to start with with that project? Okay, I have to start with a small asterisk saying I cannot promise that I will not say it depends. Uh, but but yeah, let's let's start with uh, with a simplistic definition of the problem. So we have a we have a shop. Uh, the shop have a yeah. has a shelf, and on the shelf we would like to control what's there and make sure that the um, the articles are according to the to the planogram. And then the first right. uh, uh, when, when you approach this kind of problem, the first question you you probably want to ask is where would you get the the updates from the shop from where where exactly would it come from would it come from a person a shop employee who would be taking pictures with uh with his or her uh cell phone camera or would you use a live stream for from like 20, 24 for uh, a day live stream from cameras in the shop and that would that would actually change everything in the pro approach to the problem because on one hand if you are thinking about 24 seven stream uh, from from cameras in the shop, then of course you you can get an update anytime you want. It will make the integration a little bit more complex. You might have a problem with a bit weird angles because the the, the shop cameras are, are usually some, somewhere high in the ceiling and that will uh, but but the, the 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 feed you will be getting to 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 your system, the feed you will have to train your machine learning model will be very very stable. You will always get the pictures taken or the or the or the recording taken from the same angle. So in the, in that sense, it's easier. On the other hand, if you want to train your employees to take the pictures, then there will be a bit of kind of uncertainty uh, about like how exactly will they take the picture? Will it be good enough? Will it be from similar cameras every single time? Because if not, then probably you have to think about providing the model with various examples, examples of bad picture, bad pictures as well, examples of pictures taken with a bit worse quality camera and so on. So many, many things uh, which you have to you, you have to consider with even starting off with the question, where do I get the data from? All right. So the first first answer is it depends. Uh, but what about the, the next step? What about the next step? The next step would be um, identifying what exactly we are trying to to help the customer with what exactly problem we are trying to solve because probably you will not implement this kind of system in one go and it would be good to to, to identify what we are optimizing for are we optimizing for recognizing that there, there is a gap on the shelf or it's more important to to understand which exact products are on the shelf and where exactly they are how precise we have to we have to be and i would say it, it it should be it should be an iterative process it should be an iterative process where you first of all try to understand the the customer's perspective the perspective of somebody really interested in planograms and shelves going according to the planogram and uh, it's good to start with um with a, with a problem which is a bit smaller, so one type of a shelf, for instance, but problem which is smaller, but not too simple, not too not too simplistic. Because yeah, if you think about a shelf with soda cans, it will be actually quite predictable, quite easy to 
to recognize, but uh, but not not all the products are that that simple. So make sure if you start small, you start with something representative. Right. So first one will be assessing and exploring what data we can gather in what source. The next one uh, will be uh, exploring the problem, finding finding the, the problem, the low hanging fruit, and the net next one. Well, and there will be definitely um, many, many kind of small gotchas if you, and if you identify them early in the process by talking to the customers, by thinking about what the maintenance would look like, then, then you can actually save a lot of, uh, a, a lot of hassle in the, in the, in the future. So for instance, if you assume that you take a model from the shelf, you take the machine learning model from the shelf and, um, and apply it to the problem. Most of the image recognition model uh, are working in a way that the input for the model are pictures which are labeled. So we have a label of a dog, label of a, of a cat, and that's how the, how the model was trained on. But dogs and cats are not changing that often. But when you think about your, your shop, shop example, then you realize that the, the can of Coke or, or, or the bottle of Coke, which, which you train the model on, which will probably look different in, in half a year because of the Christmas season, because of marketing changes and so on. So you have to be prepared for these kind of changes. And that's super important because if you think about data preparation for the training, if you just take some pictures from, 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 from your shelf, if you, let's say, take a few hundred pictures uh, from, from multiple shelves. If, if you ask people to label them, to mark where each product, where exactly each product is, that will work, but that will work only for some period of time. And then when the products are changing, first of all, you have to identify that they are changing. And other than that, if you want th this kind of model to continue to work, then you would have to ask that person to do the labeling once again. So for the first time, it's probably acceptable. It's quite hard problem. So, so it's acceptable level of investment. But as the, as the maintenance comes, then you realize it will not be acceptable. So you have to address the problem in, in, in another way. You have to create a model which doesn't take just single picture as an input. It takes a single in a single picture of a shelf as an input, but other than that, it takes the pictures of of the products separately, and it tries to match them, match them together, and tries to understand them together. So you don't have to retrain the model over and over again when the pictures are changing. That's right. That's right. Uh, I also see some other obstacles like cost of training model, but. Uh, I think we need to explore that point in some uh, in some other video. Are you okay with that? Oh yeah, definitely. Let's talk about costs in the next video. Right, but uh, let's sum up all the all the things which which we uh, say say today. Can you write the road roadmap for for us for me? Uh, as I would like to start with that project. Okay. Um... It may be it maybe will not be be a roadmap, but for kind of more most most uh, useful hints would be to to start small to to start with okay. something representative to start by talking with customers so we understand the the problem better and collect the feedback as often as possible. Right. Okay. I hope uh, we. We cover all what what we promised. Uh, if not, let us know uh, in a comment. We are also asking for likes and comments uh, as it boosting the the algorithm uh, in a YouTube. And it would like to be as popular as it possible. Uh, so th thank you for today and th thank you for, for for your time, time, Martin. Uh, thank you and and see you guys next time. That's right. Bye bye.